Welcome everyone to build an AI agent with me. I'll be your instructor today. I'm Jacob, the founder of Reloaded App, and these days a professional AI agent building teacher. This session is going to be a little bit different than any previous session we've done. And it's not going to be different because of the use case. The use case is competitive social media monitoring, which is a useful one and we've never done it before. And so I think you'll all enjoy it, but it's similar to other use cases we've done in the past. What's going to be different about this session is that we're going to build the workflow in an entirely different way from how we've done it any time previous. So with that, I'm going to show you quickly with a couple of slides why this time is going to be different. And then we're going to dive in and build. In Relay.app, there are two ways to build an agent. And if you've used the product recently, you've seen the new workflow creation screen looks a little bit different. The traditional way to build an agent, which I've covered in all previous instances of this Build an AI Agent With Me series, is to build the flowchart manually using the structured workflow or agent builder. So the area of the screen that's on the right where you add a trigger, you configure the step, you configure the trigger, you add a step, you configure the step, et cetera. You build each component individually directly in the context of the flowchart, filling in each of the steps and fields as necessary. But as of a couple of weeks ago, we have a new way to build your workflow or your agent that some of you may have tried, which is by asking the assistant in natural language, like human speech, to do it for you. And then the assistant will do its best to create the trigger, create the steps, write all the prompts, fill in all the fields, and you'll be able to see as it's working what it's doing for you. Then at the end, you can either tweak what it's done by writing additional prompt on the natural language side on the left, or you can go in and tweak the flowchart itself. And so in this session, I'm gonna show you how to build with the assistant, which is gonna be a different technique. So with that, please meet me on the new workflow screen in Relay.app. You'll open Relay app. If you don't have an account yet, you can sign up one for one for free at https colon slash slash relay.app. Once you get into the experience, there will be a new workflow button in the top right that's going to land you on a screen like this one. If you have a moment, you can type a title for your workflow. I've called mine competitive monitoring on X. So the use case we're going to build today is a social media monitoring use case on X. And the way this is gonna work is we're gonna ask our agent to wake up every day. We're gonna ask it to search for all of the tweets in the last 24 hours that have some keyword or uh, tag account in them. Then we're gonna ask AI to write a report on what it found and send it to us over Slack. If you want to send it to yourself over email, that's totally fine. I'll show you exactly where you can make that change in the flow. In my case, I'm going to use this for competitive monitoring use case. I want to see what people are saying about N8N, which is another product in our space. You could use this for tracking your own brand account. You could use it for tracking a topic of interest. You could use it for tracking a partner. Whatever you want to do, the same exact structure is going to apply. So now, instead of clicking the add trigger button, which I've clicked in every previous session we've done, I'm just going to start typing my prompt directly into the assistant on the left. So I'm going to say, every day, please search for all tweets that contain uh, N, uh, at N8N underscore IO. That's the, that's the handle of our competitor, N8N. Then use a to write a detailed, rich text report that summarizes the sentiment, topics, etc., and includes any interesting quotes. When possible, link to the underlying tweets. When you've written the report, send it to me over Slack. And if you want your report sent to you over email rather than Slack, all you're going to do is go into this prompt and change the last word from Slack to email. So now that I've written my prompt, I'm going to press this blue button with an up arrow, or you could hit enter. And then the AI assistant within Reloaded App is going to start building that into a workflow. And the cool thing about our assistant is you can actually 
watch what it's doing as it's going. So I'm going to narrate what's, what's happening. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to think about what I've asked it to do. And it's going to come up with a step-by-step -step plan that converts my text description into workflow speak. So you can see here, it says, here's a step-by-step -step plan. It's going to trigger the workflow daily. It's going to search for tweets. It's going to use the AI. Then it's going to send the report over Slack. Now it's told me it's going to implement the following. You can see as I'm talking, it is doing it. It is going, it is, it's as if it's clicking through all the screens of related app by itself, uh, constructing the workflow. And so you can see it's finished. It's now com completed. It's completed the workflow. It's done it in a trigger and then three additional steps. So four steps total. I'm going to hit apply to accept these changes. And then I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly what the AI agent has done so we can double check its work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through step by step looking at the flow chart, what the AI assistant created for us, just so I can double check that everything is correct. So first, I'm going to click into the trigger uh, and it tells the trigger right every day. And you can see that the trigger is October 14th at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, and it's going to run every day. Let's say 8.30 a.m. is a bad time for me. I don't want to receive this in the morning when I'm just starting my workday. I want to have it at the end of my workday when I'm winding down. So I want to change the daily trigger to 5 p.m. Pacific time. There are two ways that I could do this. I could go directly into this menu and change it to 5 p.m. Or I could ask my assistant to change it. So let's do as much as we can with the assistant for this demonstration. So I'm going to say, change the trigger to 5 p.m. PST each day. I've given that simple instruction to the assistant. Let's see if it can figure out how to change that trigger to 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. You can see that it was editing the workflow and now it adjusted it to run at 5 p.m. PST. So you can see, do you see here, it's updated the first instance to today at 5 p.m. PST. I'm happy with that. I want to apply. So now I'm happy with my trigger. Let me move down to the next step, which is searching for tweets. You can see that it created a Twitter search step or an X search step, where it's going to look for all matching tweets that contain the search query N8N underscore IO. That's exactly what I asked for. If no tweets are found, it's going to continue without a result because it's okay if the report is empty in a given day. And if more than tweets are more than 50 tweets are found, it's going to continue with the first 50. This all looks right to me. Now I'm going to move on to the AI step. The AI step is the one that is going to take in that list of tweets that was found, and it's going to turn that into a report. So you can see here, there's a prompt that says, it wrote the prompt for me automatically, analyze the attached list of Twitter posts, write a rich text detail report, Summarize sentiment, trending topics, and user opinions. Include notable, funny, or insightful quotes whenever possible. Link to these. Structure the report in well-formed and markdown with headlines and bullet points, aiming for a professional, readable summary. So you can see that the AI assistant did a very good job of structuring this step overall. It got the probe right. It got the right data in there with the AI have access. The AI having access to the tweets that were returned in step two. But there's one thing it didn't do quite right. It set the output type to plain text as opposed to rich text. So let me see if I can go to the assistant and ask you to fix that. So please change the output type of the AI step from plain text to rich text. Because I want the, I want the report it sends me to have bolding and underlining italics some emoji, whatever is relevant to make it look nice. Now you can see it changed step three to output a rich text report. And then change step four, the Slack message to include that rich text report. So now if I go to step three, you can see that the report is indeed a rich text field. So I'm happy with step three. Now let me quickly check step four. Okay, so in step four, it says it's sending it from the relay bot. It's sending it a DM to me and it's including the report in rich text. But I actually don't want this as a DM. I want this to go to a channel so that everyone on my team can see it. So let me tell the assistant, Instead of a DM to me in Slack, can you send it to the hashtag social listener channel? So you can see here that it changed the destination from the DM to me to the social listener channel. So it got that right. And so you can see here the pro, uh, let me stop screen sharing for a moment just so I can uh, explain kind of the thought process here. So you can see the thought process I'm going through here. The 
flow chart of the workflow, it's still an incredibly art important artifact for you to understand. It's a really good way to visualize what the AI is going to do to understand in a step-by-step -step way where you might need to make changes. And so this is the process I typically recommend, even if you don't feel comfortable changing the flow chart yourself, or if it's just too annoying to do so, this is the process I recommend. Write your initial prompt, have it create the initial workflow for you. Go through that workflow step-by-step step in the flow chart to double check that it's right. And if you see something that's not matching your expectations, you can either modify the flow chart directly, or you can go back to the AI assistant and tell it to do something different. Now that we've uh, fully created this workflow, it's time to test it. Okay, so I'm gonna click on a test run and start now. So you can see that the first step is running. It is looking for tweets about N8N underscore IO. One of the nice things that the AI assistant does for you is it automatically gives your steps nice readable titles. <laughs> so you can see that in step two, instead of step two is just saying search for tweets, it says search for tweets about N8N. And step three, instead of just saying write with AI, it says write with AI report of tweets. And this is really helpful when you're looking at your workflow later to try to understand what, what happened. So now step two has finished. And you can see that in the view output, it says there are 51 tweets that were found. And then I could go through each of these, each of these tweets to see what people are saying about N8N. But as you can see, even just scrolling through these 50 tweets is annoying. So I'm gonna wait for my AI to write the report for me. Okay, now the AI has finished the report and it has sent me a Slack message. So let's see what the final report looks like. So the report says daily Twitter report or X uh, on October 14th, 2025. Here's the executive summary. Conversation centered on N8N's recent AI focused product updates, especially the AI workflow builder. And that's basically the N8N version of the thing that we're using in this session. It just launched today. Um, and then uh, various community events. Uh, sentiment skewed generally positive with users praising the quality of life gains and faster workflow creation while a minority raised skepticism about real-world scalability and compared N8N to coding-first approaches. So let's see, let's see. So here's uh, the overall sentiment, the hot topics, and now it's including several quotes on positive, uh, some neutral and cautious quotes, and some skeptical quotes. So here's one saying, skip the node hell of N8N and go with pure Python and ChatGPT. Um, and you can see that all of these link directly to the underlying tweets. You can see a more detailed uh, articulation of the trending topics and tweets. People really like the new file and improvements. I actually want to look into those and see what they're what they're doing there. Then they have a couple live community events. And here's some, some product feedback, some community highlights, some question requests, notable funny and thankful quotes, engagement standouts, and takeaways for us. Um, this is actually a really, a really, really good report. And you can see that it was uh, successfully sent to my social listener channel, which I can show you now. Here, I got the report nicely formatted directly in my Slack. Now, this report was a little bit long. So uh, uh, what I want to do is I want to go back to the editor and I want to make a, a, a slight change to uh, make sure that the report is more concise. So let me go back to the assistant that just tested and got my first report. It was a bit long. Well, let's constrain it to no more than 200 words. So now I've given this instruction to my AI assistant. And what I expect it to do is to go into the prompt in step three and uh, change the prompt. And you can see it's doing exactly that. Uh, it went into step three and it changed this key part of the prompt saying, make the details report a max of 200 words. So I'm gonna apply that and hit done. Oh, and there was one other thing I noticed about the report that wasn't quite quite right is it was sort of implying that I work for N8N, but I'm actually a competitor in N8N. So let me just, just let me just note that as well. Uh, one other thing I noticed about the report. It implied that I worked for N8N, but were actually competitors. Could you write the report through uh, 
the lens of competitive analysis. And so you can see here, I'm writing a prompt just like I would give feedback to a person on my team or an agency who had written this report. I write in natural language what I want to be different about it. And now it's going to go through and update the prompt. So let's see what it updated in the prompt. It said, you are a neutral external analyst, right? So it said, instead of you being a member of the NA team, you are a neutral external analyst. And let me just, let me put a fine point on that. Say, I'm not a neutral analyst. I work at Relay.app, a competitor to NADAN. So make sure the report highlights any key things I need to take into account for building our product. Now, once again, I expect it to go through and edit the prompt. And there you go. You can see a new prompt just pop right in there. It says, you work at Relay app, a competitor to NADAN. Review a list of the attached posts. Highlight strategic insights and actionable intelligence for Relay app's product and strategy. So now this prompt is really, really good. And I'm confident that if I run it again, I would get a perfect report. And so we just built a competitive monitoring workflow using Relay app. Here's what it does. Every day, it searches for all the tweets on a particular topic. It writes a natural language, rich text report describing what I need to know about that, including sentiment, quotes, other key topics, and it sends it to me over Slack. And I think that we built this workflow without ever touching the flowchart. <laughs> Every single change I made to the workflow, I did via the natural language assistant. I still referenced the flowchart many, many times to see what was going on and get a sense of the plan, but I never actually had to tweak anything in the flowchart itself. I was able to issue all my instructions directly to the natural language assistant as if I was instructing a person on my team to do this workflow.